Oh, this is Beck Lover, and you're watching another episode of the Interesting Times podcast right here on the Beck Lover podcast. I'm reporting from Dallas, Texas. I'm actually up in Plano, reporting from the beautiful Gaylord Hotel right here. That's correct, the Gaylord. Okay, that's the name of the hotel. I didn't give it that name. In any event, if you want to check out all the news, all the stories, everything that's going on throughout the world, I am your search filter. I go through all the stories. I gather all the important things that I think you should know regardless of where you live in this world. Whether you live in America, Europe, Africa, China, I go through it all. I compact it and I keep you in the know with world events, politics, war, whatever the case may be. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and stay tuned as always. I'm going to make this episode quick since it's Sunday and most of you are watching football and sports and there's nothing wrong with that but it shouldn't be all you do with your life. I'm going to get into some of the headlines for today, and I want to appreciate all of you. We're growing tremendously on Spotify, YouTube, Rumble, Instagram, uh, X. I just really, really want to thank all of you for the work and the support. So I'm going to be checking out with you all. I'm going to finish this episode quickly, and you guys can carry on with your day. So... I will call you back, Merg. In any event, I'm in Dallas, Texas, taking care of some business down here. And thanks, everybody, for all the success you've helped me achieve. Let's get to the headlines before it's too late. We are a couple of weeks away from the most important election probably in recent history for the entire world. Even if you're not American, the American election affects the whole world because whoever's in office people that work in congress senate their policies their decisions to finance wars to go to war um, to print money at alarming rates we are in a very serious problem here in the united states of america i know a lot of you are listening from all over the world you must understand something the actions of our government do not represent the will and what the American people want. Most Americans don't support what's going on. Most Americans don't want war. Most of Americans don't want all of our money going to fund these wars all over the world. You must understand that. I know a lot of you out there probably hate us and you think we all agree with what our government does, but we do not agree. Many of us are vocal against it. Thousands of people are protesting and I'm not just talking about this war now. I'm talking about the, all the wars that we've been fighting over the last 30, 40 years. The American people have not won anything. Our country is paying $1 trillion in interest. It's insane when you think about it. That's just the interest payment. And all of this money is sent to destroy people's lives all over the world, people we've never met. And most Americans that are not against this stuff just really don't know what's going on. My honest opinion, it doesn't matter who sits in that office unless many things are fixed here in the United States of America. The way we vote, the way things are secured, the amount of time Senate and Congress people, so if you're in Europe, that's people like in Parliament, how long they stay in power, like you have ministers. and. Um, too many of them have been in power for 30, 40, 50 years. It's really, really ridiculous. And we are seeing what happens when you leave politicians in power for too long. I would say that these people are more powerful than the president. They know how to play the game. They work with all the different departments for 50 years. Okay, It's one big club, and the American people are not in it. One person that people don't know, I judge with a grain of salt. Yes, he's done a lot of good stuff. I still don't trust the guy. I just, I don't, okay? I don't think that they just give control of the space program and all this technology. Um, I just, with a grain of salt when it comes to Elon Musk. Yes, I support what he's done on X, um, allowing some free speech, accept certain things he does, you know, he does censor. He does. So free speech is free speech, man. In any event, Reuters reports Elon Musk daily $1 million payouts at Trump rally draw legal scrutiny. <clears throat> so um, 
let's take a look at this. Okay, because this is like the crunch time. This is where all the weapons are pulled out, all the money spent, commercials, visits, podcasts, you know, Harris and Trump. Musk awards first million dollars to event attendee. Has given $75 million to America PAC to support Trump. America PAC has helped to mobilize and register voters. Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, billionaire Elon Musk promised on Saturday to give away $1 million each day until November's election to someone who signs his online petition with the first prize awarded at a PAC event supporting Republican Donald Trump, raising questions about the legality of the payments. Musk gave a $1 million check to an attendee of his America PAC event in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, aimed at rallying supporters behind presidential candidate Trump. The winner was a man named John Dreher, according to event staff. By the way, John had no idea, so anyway, you're welcome, the Tesla founder said as he handed Dreher the check. The money is the latest example of Musk using his extraordinary wealth to influence the tightly contested presidential race between Trump and Democratic rival Vice President Kamala Harris. Musk started America PAC, a political action organization he founded in support of Trump's presidential campaign. The group is helping mobilize and register voters in battleground states, but there are signs it is having trouble meeting its goals. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro said on Sunday, meet the press, that Musk's plan to give money to registered voters in Pennsylvania is deeply concerning, and it is something that law enforcement could take a look at. Well, I got a question, Josh Shapiro. You seem to be upset if Elon Musk uses his money to influence people to vote for a presidential candidate, but you politicians don't seem to have a problem taking money from lobbyists to vote a certain way on issues, and many times not to the benefit of the American people. You're worried about what he does with his money? How about the American people are worried about what all of you politicians are doing with the money that you get from lobbies that are influencing your votes? This is hypocrisy at its finest. You want to call out Elon Musk using his money to lobby people to vote, but it's okay for you politicians to accept money and to accept funds from companies to influence votes. You're hypocrites. You're clowns. Period. You don't have the right to open your mouth about Elon Musk. Period. Now, when I say that they'll do anything they can right now to rack up last-minute votes, there's footage going viral of Trump working in McDonald's and working the fry grill. So these politicians are going to go and do everything they can to make people feel like they're, they're on their side. Uh, Trump is probably sitting there going, kid, I hope you have more ambition than this. I've worked in restaurants for many years in my life. I really did, but I always knew I wasn't going to stay there. There's a lot of people out there that get trapped. They don't know that there's other ways to make a living or move up or evolve, and they get stuck in these vicious cycles in lives. And really, where you are in life is not where you have to be. This is a fact. But people don't want to take the steps to change their lives or liberate their lives or better themselves. I don't judge anybody in the service industry. I worked in the service industry for over 10 years. Okay, I don't know how many of you know that. I waited tables. I worked in hotels. I did valet parking. Okay, all respectable jobs. But this shouldn't be your career. You know what I mean, man? I understand we fall into hard times. You do what you got to do to pay the bills. But there's always ways to do things, you know, and move up in life. And I hope that that inspires you, you know, if you're listening to this. You know, especially if you live in the U.S. There's a lot of things I'm working on, guys and girls. I have a weekly sales call that you guys can jump on. It's not multi-level marketing, and I teach you how to do things that can help you make money, and you don't have to pay me a dollar, you know, but we work together. The Daily Hodel, bank abrupt shutdown by U.S. regulators and second bank failure of 2024. Okay, the banks are starting to go kaput. Financial regulators just shut down a bank in Oklahoma, Mark marking the second U.S. bank failure in 2024. The First National Bank of Lindsay has been shuttered by the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, 
The agency says it took action after identifying false and deceptive bank records and other information that suggests fraud depleted the bank's capital. The OCC also found that the bank was in an unsafe or unsound condition to transact business, that the bank's assets were less than its obligations to its creditors and others. The first bank failure of 2024 was Philadelphia-based Republic Bank, which collapsed amid significant financial losses, inadequate capital reserves, and issues with asset quality. This followed a series of high-profile failures in 2023, including Silicon Valley Bank, Signature Bank, and First Republic Bank. Yo, your money's not safe in banks. I don't care what anyone says. Okay, and you're only insured by the federal government, FDIC insurance, up like 100, 150, or 200. I don't know what the max is. Okay, that's per account. So just because your money's in the bank, don't think it's safe. Okay, because if everyone was to withdraw at the same time, you would not get your money. I hope you understand that. Gold is skyrocketing. Silver is skyrocketing. Inflation's through the roof. I'm not a financial advisor, but you're losing money by keeping your money in the banks. You're not hedging what's coming. That's a fact. The world's 100 trillion fiscal time bomb keeps ticking. Okay? This is reported by Yahoo Finance. If it's weeks, it's pretty simple. One word, ugly. And think about 2,000 people love that template. S&P was down, what, 7% in two weeks, something like that. That's a pretty bad scenario. And bond yields plunge during that time. So if it's a week or more, I think it gets pretty nasty. Even before global finance chiefs fly into Washington over the next few days, they've been urged in advance by the International Monetary Fund to tighten their belts. Two weeks ahead of potentially error-defining U.S. election and with the world's recent inflation crisis barely behind it, ministers and central bankers gathering in the nation's capital face intensifying calls to get their fiscal houses in order while they still can. The fund, whose annual meetings begin there on Monday, have already pointed to some of the themes it hopes to press home with a barrage of projections and studies on the global economy in coming days. The IMF's fiscal monitor on Wednesday will feature a warning that public debt levels are set to reach $100 trillion this year, driven by China and the U.S. Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva in a speech on Thursday stressed how that mountain of borrowing is weighing on the world. Our forecasts point to an unforgiving combination of low growth and high debt, a difficult future, she said. Governments must work to reduce debt and rebuild buffers for the next shock, which will surely come, and maybe sooner than we expect. I've been saying this to you guys for years. Get some of your money out of cash, diversify, real estate, precious metals, electronic currency, Spread your eggs. Don't leave it just in cash. Something's coming. Something big is coming. The stock market doesn't make any, any sense at all. They're just printing, 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 printing. Like we are on a course to cataclysmic financial catastrophe. And I'm scared that with the BRICS system coming up, and let's pull that up. Let's see if there's any announcements on the BRICS. Forgot to look at that today, folks. Let's pull this up. Uh, BRICS summit, Russia to push to push to end dollar dominance, okay? This is reported by Reuters. <clears throat> Russia is seeking to convince BRICS countries to build an alternative platform for international payments that would be immune to Western sanctions when it hosts the group's leaders at a summit next week. I mean, this kettle pot of financial uncertainty, war, conflict, it's coming to a head, folks. I hope you're ready, man. I hope you have a backup plan if, God forbid, this dollar goes, we've never seen dollar collapse. But you see countries like Venezuela, Albania, Serbia, uh, the yen in Japan when it had its issues you know, 20, 30 years ago. Like, we, like, this is crazy what could be coming our way. Like, it's not a joke. Okay, you need to be ready. President, President Vladimir Putin is keeping to build up BRICS, which has expanded to include Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, the UAE, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa as powerful counterweight to the West in global politics and trade. Okay, us versus them. The new iron wall is what this is. Interesting times indeed, my friends. Now, for those of you that thought it was cool, I have so many people, you know, even my girl was like, listen, man, you know, you should swab your mouth and and, and see where you come from. I know I'm Albanian. I'm American, 
born and raised, but my ethnicity, my gen- I'm Albanian, man. I don't need a genetics test. I'm purebred Albanian, man. You know? So a lot of people went and did this. You find out, you know. I know that sometimes when I look below the belt, you know, there's got to be, I must have at least one or two black ancestors somewhere. Like, there's just no way I don't. Like, it's just someone, one of my great, great, great grandmothers must have because, you know, I'm genetically blessed, man. I'm just joking. (laughs) In any event, if you are over 8 to 10, you might want to do a 23 and me. Maybe your great aunt, Rebecca, your great, great, great grandmother, you know, she took a little trip down to Africa. You never know. 23 and me faces an uncertain future. So does your genetic data. Okay, this is the problem when you give people your genetic footprint. Okay? Just like when we go to the airports and like, sir, would you like to sign up for clear? We'll scan your retina and you can. No, I don't want you to have my shit. The less of my biometric footprints and fingerprints you have, the better. I don't want you having any of it. Not a hair on my head. This is why. <coughs> DNA and genetic testing firm 23andMe is in turmoil following a data breach last year and its ongoing financial decline. The once pioneering giant now faces an uncertain future amid efforts to take the company private, intensifying concerns about what might happen to the genetic data of 23andMe, some 15 million customers. Best known for its saliva-based test kits that offer a glimpse into a person's genetic ancestry, 23andMe has seen its value plummet by more than 99% from its 6 billion peak since going public in early 2021 after failing to turn a profit. That lack of profit was attributed to waning customer interest in 23andMe's use once test kits and lackluster growth of its subscription services. The company was also floored by a huge months-long data breach that saw hackers steal the ancestry data of almost 7 million users throughout 2023. I mean, this is crazy. Think about it. You guys gave them your DNA, your genetic code, and this information was breached by hackers. Okay? They have your genetics, man. They got your DNA. Literally. Like, think about this. This is why I never did it. Less than a week later, 23andMe co-founder, CEO Ann Wojcicki, said she was considering third-party takeover proposals for the company. Yeah, I'm sure Microsoft's going to want to get in there. Somebody's going to want to buy that data, have access to everyone's DNA. Crazy, man. You guys, like, so many people just can't think three steps ahead. Like, you should always be like, what is the worst that can happen? Then what is the best that can happen? People don't think, man. They wanted to find out, you know, I'm, I'm part French, I'm part this, I'm part, like, who cares, bro? How's that changing your life today? The only DNA test you should be doing is if you think your wife cheated on you and you want to know if your kids are your kids. Other than that, I don't, I don't care to do a DNA test. Like, it's stupid. We're all human beings. It don't matter where you come from. Now, we've all been to the airport, and it can be so freaking annoying, man. Like, you're waiting for your family to come. You're standing around by the arrivals area of the airport. You're waiting for them to come through customs, and then you see these people one by one coming out. Oh, my God. Oh, my cousin, or their lover, or their dad, or their mom. And I get it, okay? We're human beings. It's beautiful. You should embrace. You shouldn't be taking three minutes and blocking the aisle. People are trying to get the hell out of the airport to go to their family and get to their cars and be on their way. So... There's one country that's tired of it. New Zealand has limited the amount of time you can hug someone at an airport. And I agree with them. They've debated by limiting goodbye hugs to three minutes. A New Zealand airport has placed a limit on goodbye hugs at its drop-off area, allowing a maximum of three minutes for farewells. I think that's crazy. Three minutes? Like, you don't have to walk to the section. Like, you could hug outside for an hour. But I agree. You shouldn't be blocking the entrances or the exits where everyone's coming out. The sign at Dundin Airport reads, Max hug time three minutes, and suggests that those wishing for longer goodbyes should use the car park instead. I agree. As a matter of fact, if you're going to go back to the car, maybe you have more than three minutes. Maybe you get a whopping five minutes, if you know what I mean, you filthy animals. A photo of the sign posted on the Facebook group, The View From My Window, earlier this week, sparked a debate about what's considered appropriate at an appropriate amount of time. So what do you think? I can't stand people that block. 
oh yeah grab your bags and move man go to the side go to you know you're gonna hey you just made it you're spending a couple days couple weeks like hug each other all week get, get the fuck out of the way of the airport very simple now on to more serious news ukraine and russia the war continues the saga continues ukraine releases video it claims shows north korean troops stationed in russia the release of the video comes after the head of the Ukrainian military intelligence claimed that around 11,000 North Korean infantry are currently training in eastern Russia. A video perpetuating to show dozens of North Korean soldiers lining up to collect Russian military fatigues has been released by Ukrainian officials who say it shows the introduction of troops sent by Pyongyang into the conflict. Here's the video on X. like a lot of North Koreans going to fight for Russia in Ukraine, basically North Korean mercenaries. If I was those North Korean soldiers, the minute I touched ground in Russia and I got a weapon, I would desert and get the fuck out of there, seek political asylum. I would actually go to Ukraine just to get away from King Jong-un. But I'm telling you folks, we are in fifth dimensional warfare. We are in, I believe, already in World War III. We just don't even realize it. And I think it started a few years ago, man. Now we go over to this article. Russia returns bodies of 501 soldiers. Western allies weigh Zelensky's victory plan. Russia returned to Ukraine the bodies of 501 soldiers on Friday. Ukrainian authorities said they move appeared to be the biggest repatriation of war dead since Russia invaded in February 2022. Most of the soldiers were killed in the fighting in the eastern Donetsk region of Ukraine around the city of Avdivya. After a long and grueling battle, Russian forces captured the city in February. Ukraine's coordination headquarters for the treatment of prisoners of war said in a statement, law enforcement agencies and forensic experts will identify the victims. Ukrainian authorities said the bodies will then be returned to family members for burial. Obviously, we all know that Ukraine will become a member of NATO, so the question is exactly when, but that's when the main issue debate last night. I find it disturbing that they will put Ukraine into NATO in the middle of a war, an active war with Russia, pump trillions of dollars, yet Kosovo, the Republic of Kosovo, which is one of the most pro-American countries in the world and very pro-West, they don't allow them to enter NATO. They don't give them any weaponry. It's crazy, man. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, let's see here. And what I was speaking about earlier, you know, this election, and I forgot to read this article earlier, you know, you have Elon Musk, billionaire, and Mark Cuban, billionaire, and they've been fighting back and forth all day on, on X, you know, formerly known as Twitter. I got to be honest with you, I lost a lot of respect for Mark Cuban. And it's not even because he supports Kamala Harris. No, nah, actually, that's why. That's, a, that's the only reason why, actually. Uh, this is a very big headline, by the way. I'm sure most of you heard of it already. Israel plans to launch airstrike, airstrike attack on Iran, and it was leaked. The U.S. has launched an investigation into the leaking of two alleged intelligence documents that detailed Israel's preparation for a potential strike on Iran in the coming days. The documents seen by The Telegraph include interpretations of satellite imagery that appear to have been prepared recently by the National Geospatial intelligence agency and analyze information gathered by u.s spy satellites and the national security agency they were marked top secret dated october 15 and 16 and were circulated on friday night on the telegram messaging app one document says israel continues to prepare munitions and covert drone activity while the other outlines israeli air force exercises involving ballistic and air-to-surface missiles. We cannot definitely predict the scale and scope of a strike on Iran, and such a strike can occur with no further geointelligence. Warning one document. Geointelligence is a military acronym <coughs> which mostly relies on satellite images. The document adds, we have not observed indications that Israel intends to use a nuclear weapon, saying a recent dispersal of Israel's Jericho two medium-range ballistic missiles, which are believed to have been built as a nuclear delivery system, was probably defensive. It's just what a wild, wild time we are living in. Really. Crazy. <clears throat> Let's 
So, yeah, there's a big investigation. Who leaked these documents? Clearly someone that doesn't want Israel to do what they're about to do. So, interesting times indeed. Officials are sounding the alarm. We spoke about that one, Elon Musk with the million dollars. This story, very disturbing. Cold-blooded mom sentenced in death of her two children found hanging in home's basement. A Pennsylvania mother will spend the rest of her life in prison for the barbaric deaths of her two young children who were found hanging by a dog leash in the basements of their home, bro. Lisa Snyder, 41, was convicted last month of two counts of first-degree murder in the September 2019 deaths of Brinley, four years old, and Connor, eight years old. The brother and sister were both found hanged with the same dog leash in the basement of their Albany Township home. 60 miles northwest of Philadelphia. Although the kids were taken to the hospital, they died three days later after being taken off life support. It's just crazy, man. What a sick, sick world we live in, man. I just don't see her as my mother anymore, he said as his mother sobbed. The eldest son was also denied his mother's claims that his younger brother is Connor with depressed because he was being bullied at school, which drove him to kill himself. These are the two kids that lost their lives. It's just uh, God, just, just, just God. F- please don't send me to hell. Please just hit us with a meteorite. We honestly, we failed with this gift, God. We failed with this gift that you gave us. Free will, the power to be free. Just hit us with a meteorite, God. Just, just put us out of our misery, man. Please. Ex-Indian government agent plotted assassination on U.S. soil. Found this one to be interesting. Former employee of the Indian government has been indicated in the U.S. on charges of directing the assassination attempt of Sikh separatist leader in New York City. The Justice Department, in an 18-page indictment Thursday, charged Vikash Yadav, 39, with three counts of murder for hire and money laundering. He could have just poisoned him at Dunkin' Donuts. I mean, they have a pretty big network. I'm joking. I'm joking. Libyan terror suspect arrested in Berlin suburb. German prosecutors said they had arrested a Libyan man on suspicion of having links to the Islamic State group and planning an attack the Israeli embassy in Berlin with fire, firearms. Terrorism expert Rafael Bosin speaks with Dutch Avella. Israel says it will target Hezbollah's financial arm and announces imminent strikes in Lebanon. Cuba struggles to restore its power grid, enters third day with no electricity as another hurricane nears their country. Dead cows on the side of the roads in the aftermath of the bird flu outbreak here in the United States of America. On Friday afternoon, there are 13 confirmed human cases of the bird flu in the state. In South Valley, a disturbing sight of infected and diseased cows on the side of the road sparked biosecurity concerns for local activists, okay, which is crazy. Okay, this bird flu thing, we're not, we're not out of the woods with this one yet, folks. Um, what else we have for you? We got this article. Two competitors die in one day during triathlon world championships. The sport of triathlon is in a shock after two competitors died at this week's world championship. One British and one Mexican competitor, both men competing in veteran age groups, died on Friday while competing at the Toro Molinos near Malaga and the Mediterranean Costa del Sol. The Mexican Triathlon Federation announced with deep sadness that 79-year-old, the fuck's a 79-year-old doing a triathlon for? And a 57-year-old had died from apparent heart attacks. I think after a certain age, man, you got to take it easy. Seriously. Make sure you follow my X account, folks. I do a lot of work on here. I actually do a lot of live shows where I participate in panels with like 20, 30 people discussing all types of crazy stuff. You can follow me at Beck Lover NYC. Make sure you follow that. I'm here in Dallas. It's been phenomenal. The weather's great. There's not a cloud in the sky. I'm craving Mexican food. What a better, what a better place to get. I'm going to go have some amazing nachos, some fajitas, and uh, some queso. And I'm looking forward to that. I love all of you. Thank you so much for being a part of my life, for supporting my work, for following, for leaving likes, for contents. Share. Tell your friends about me my podcast i have a ton of content coming soon including some amazing interviews as i relaunch the second season of the comeback team podcast right here 
on the Beck Lover Podcast. May, remember one thing. We live in an interesting world. So make sure you stay tuned right here for all the interesting news, headlines, and gossip and my crazy twist on the world we live in. Beck Lover.